Hello, and welcome back to another episode of High Ones Unsolved, where we discuss and conduct an investigation into the question, what really happened? This week, we're going to be investigating the alleged affair between John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. What do you think thus far? Well, I don't know how to feel about this. The President of the United States cheating on his virtually perfect wife with a megastar. It sounds messy. And let the record show, this whole entire story is very messy. I can't imagine this was the smoothest relationship ever, but let's get right into it. On May 19, 1962, 35th President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, celebrated his 45th birthday with a star-studded party fit for a king. But amongst all the celebrity guest appearances that were made that night, by far the most controversial was the song Happy Birthday, sung to the president by Marilyn Monroe herself in front of a live and very much so surprised audience. Marilyn Monroe. For all the things you've done, the battles that you've won, the way you deal with U.S. Steel, and our problems by the time we thank you so much. Everybody, happy birthday! To put it into perspective how big the performance was, the president had other artists such as Ella Fitzgerald. The party was also held at Madison Square Garden, yet the most attention-grabbing thing about the party was Marilyn's performance. JFK wasn't secretive about his opinion on the performance either. After receiving his birthday cake, which was enormous by the way, he was quoted saying, and keep in mind he said this to hundreds of people, quote, I can now retire from politics after having had happy birthday sung to me in such a sweet, wholesome way. End quote. Now, to make all of this just a little bit more messy, the wife of JFK and First Lady of the United States, Jackie Kennedy, was actually not even in attendance at her husband's birthday bash. Yeah. Ooh, this isn't looking too hot for JFK at this point. And the thing is, Marilyn Monroe was the main event at a married man's birthday party. Well, maybe she was just another performer at the event, you know? Maybe she was like, ooh, a party for the president? I want to perform there. You see, that's where this gets a little, um, risque, for lack of a better word. Marilyn showed up late to the party and hit the stage in a skin-tight, flesh-colored dress that was so tight she had to be cut out of it. Not to mention she was very open in making known that she had dressed up just for the president and for the president alone. female. She was backstage having been sewn into one dress and cut out of another. Usually she would have some sort of like house dress on that they would actually cut her out of so that it wouldn't mess up her hair so that she could get dressed to go out. Is it possible that this was all just a publicity stunt? I mean, think about it. They seem to be two people who thrive off of attention from others. Is it so hard to believe that maybe, just maybe, these two just wanted to make headlines? Well, you could see it that way, or you can look at it like this. JFK and Marilyn were easily in the top five most famous people at the time. Attention followed them everywhere. They would never have to do anything to go out and get it. And besides, I don't think the President of the United States would put himself in such a position. 
This was 1962, not 2019. That's interesting, because if nothing happened between them, why would the FBI care? Don't they have better things to do? For them to go out of their way and destroy all evidence of the two together seems sketchy. I will say, it definitely does incriminate the FBI quite a bit. So what, Marilyn Monroe saying happy birthday to the president? End of story, right? Well, no. That's not even close to being the conclusion. But to further investigate what happened, let's look into the relationship between JFK and Jack Kennedy. Oh, snap. Oh, snap is right. In JFK's earlier days, he was a known frat boy living off his father's money. Well, let's just assume JFK should have been saving instead of raving because his real estate mogul father, Joseph P. Kennedy, cut JFK's funds. So he was a trust fund baby who went broke. That's gotta be tough. Oh yeah. You see, Jackie Onassis' father was so rich, he could build himself a bank out of money if he wanted to. But eventually his business failed, he went broke, and his family suffered. Jackie had a brilliant idea that was going to save all of them from their problems. Marry a rich man, of course. And so she met JFK, who she thought was rich, and the two got married. Surprise, surprise, they were both still broke. But eventually things looked up for the two, and over the years, they became one of the richest and most famous couples in the world. Wait a minute, so they didn't marry for love? They married for love of money. Nope, doesn't count. And that's supposedly what John thought of the marriage. And when you add the baddest woman on the face of the earth to a quote-unquote loveless marriage, you get some reality TV-level drama. Things got so dramatic that Marilyn kept it real and actually spoke to Jackie on the phone, telling her that the president was going to divorce her in order to get married to Marilyn. Jackie, being a real one, kept her poker face and said, Marilyn, you'll marry Jack. That's great. You'll move into the White House, and you'll assume the responsibilities of First Lady, and I'll move out, and you'll have all the problems. End quote. Ooh, this could be a movie. Just picture it. Yeah, I'd watch it. And just as you thought it was over, the plot. Dickens. It was reported that Marilyn and the president had actually met on a weekend trip at Bing Crosby's house, a trip that Jackie Kennedy wasn't invited to. Was he really that much of a big deal? I mean, these guys are acting like JFK is the only guy in the world. Were females really attracted to him like that? Great question. Let's ask Diane Carroll. And Diane Carroll. I haven't a clue what we're saying in that picture. I only know that usually when I looked at John F. Kennedy, it was very difficult for me to concentrate. He was a very charismatic, handsome, virile, masculine man. Did I say it all? (laughs) Oh yeah, Diane, I think you've said enough. Now, to bring this tale to a tragic end, just three months after singing at JFK's birthday party on August 5th, 1962, Marilyn was found dead from a supposed overdose on sleeping pills, putting an end to her affair with the president. And, as if meant to be, John Fitzgerald Kennedy would be assassinated a little over a year later on November 22nd, 1963. And that's the old picture up on the affair between JFK and Marilyn Monroe. Tune in next time we investigate Alexander Hamilton and John Lawrence. Brotherly love? I think not. Signing off, I'm Isaiah. And I'm Esley. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching, and we'll see y'all later. Bye!